Hey guys, a few days ago I talked about the new version 7.2 release of React Router and I went over the type safe href utility but there's something in the release docs I haven't really talked about and if I scroll down here as you can see in not the minor changes not the patch changes but the unstable changes section here there's a call out to a new feature flag and not the vt environment api which is also cool in of itself but the unstable split route modules and today's video is dedicated to this flag one of the biggest reasons i fell in love with react router is because it gets out of the way and does what a framework should do for you it handles the low level stuff it helps you bundle and ship a great production ready application and this is the perfect example of how they help you optimize your app for free so if i go back to the origin of this flag or rather the rfc for it you can find it here so it's in the discussions on the react router page but basically the idea is for every route module and if you don't know what a route module is it's basically a file where you define the loader where you define the action client loader blah 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 this is where the magic happens so before what would happen is if you went to a new page you would need to fetch that module and after the module is fetched you would then call the loader and then after all of that is done you would render it and now what they do with this flag is they bundle all the small chunks of the module into separate files so you can set, fetch them separately and render sooner so what does this really look like in action well let's draw it and talk about it here i'm gonna draw this line here so this will be our browser and our browser wants to render something so it's gonna make a request and the request is gonna be for something like the products page so products.ts or rather once it's bundled this would be something like products.js and or rather it would be something like chunk then a random hash then jet.js but for the sake of understanding it let's call it products.js and then that hits our server and then our server sends it back so the response and then once the response is back and let's change our server to be something more greenish and once the response is back the loader is gonna call the server so loader or the client loader depends or the client loader can call something else it really depends and then we get the response back so again the response here and then oh after all of this is done then this renders so we draw this little circle render begins and then we move the arrow as well all right so that's how it worked before so now how it's gonna work is and let's say that the products.js file has a huge component that renders like a few kilobytes of js or rather requires a few kilobytes of js and let's say this takes about for example 500 milliseconds and then this takes another 500 milliseconds and then to get to the rendering begins we would take one second so or 1000 milliseconds so that's how it worked before and now how it works and i'm gonna add server here so now how this works is because it's split into smaller chunks this would be a request to something like products.loader.js and this request would take for example 100 milliseconds or even less or it can take more but hopefully it doesn't and at the same time it's gonna request for products dot for example component and this request might take longer than 100 milliseconds it might take one second but the important thing is because the products loader js is quick and takes 100 milliseconds the response for loader is gonna go back and then 
this can then allow the browser to make a request to your server, for example, for 500 milliseconds. And then while this is executing, there's going to be another response. And this is response for products.component.js. So now we already fetched the component here at this point. But the cool thing is because we already fetched the loader and it sent the request to the server, it's already executing on the server. And now when we get the response for the component, by that time, we're already halfway through our request to the server for the loader stuff or the client loader, whatever. And then once the server responds here, so this would be your 500 milliseconds, you can render whatever the component is. And if we do the math here, so this would be, instead of the one second that it was before, this would be 600 milliseconds. And you have saved 400 milliseconds for free. You haven't really implemented anything yourself. You haven't made some crazy optimizations to fetch the loader sooner or the bundles. You haven't split them in a way that it makes it faster. You get this completely for free and you can just render your page quicker. And this is something that's really low level. And this is the exact example of something a framework should handle for you and React Router does it for you. And I think this is really, really cool. And another reason why I love this is because it's one single line of code. And if you don't believe me, if we switch over to my editor, all I have to do is go to my reactor.config and then in the future flags, add the unstable split route modules. And if I save this, I already have this feature enabled. It's splitting my bundles into smaller chunks. It fetches everything and fetches from the server faster. And my application is faster by default. And if you don't think this is awesome, I don't know what to tell you. And one more last thing before I let you go is I want to show you another future flag that you already see in the editor, but I'm going to switch to the release docs. And that is the unstable with environment API. So if you are wondering when React server components are going to come to React router, this is the key that unlocks it. So a few months ago, I made a video where I talked about that all that needs to happen is that the V6 release needs to go out and it did. And then I also talked about how React 19 needs to come out and it did. So where are the RFCs? In order to implement React server components in React Router, the React Router team needed to release the unstable or rather the V8 environment API support and with version 7.2 they have so if you turn this flag on and get it working to the point where it builds your project you are rsc ready and what that means is whenever they release react server components which will definitely be hidden behind a feature flag all you will have to do is enable the feature flag and you'll be able to use react server components inside of your react Router apps and I think this is also a really cool addition that's not talked about a lot. If you want to be ready as soon as possible for React server components, enable this flag. And again, it's the same as before. You just need to enable it here. So unstable with your environment API. And in order to test if it works, you just need to build your project. And hopefully, for example, if I build this right now, it's going to bundle it. And as you can see, it bundled it properly. If you get to a point where it says built in X milliseconds or seconds, depending on your project size, it means you are ready for React server components. And if you're wondering when those are coming out, they're probably going to come out in the next month, or rather that's the time frame that the React Router team hopes to get them delivered. Maybe it takes a little bit more, but I'm really excited for it. And that's it for today. Let me know what you thought about the video. Are you going to use these feature flags or do you even like them? What do you think about them? 
and what are you looking forward to next? I'm guessing it's middleware, but let me know. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!